Hey guys, Young Blood with you, and today I wanted to talk to you about picking the right general purpose ship. And we've done a variety of these to this point, like combat, piracy, cargo, etc. But today, today we're going to focus on the ships that I feel are good investments if you're not sure what you want to do in the PU, or if you want to know, or if you just happen to know that you want to dabble and do a little bit of everything. Now it's worth noting that versatile ships tend to take the master of none approach to a lot of things, but there are some that I think that you should be able to handle wearing a lot of different hats in. Now I'm going to follow a similar format here <clears throat> to ones that I've done before, where I start cheaper and then work my way up the spectrum. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start with the starter options. Now for those of you who are unaware, um, there's a couple ships labeled as starter ships, because they're essentially the cheapest ships that will get you into the game, and their capabilities and size tend to be a little bit smaller. That's not to say the game is pay to win, and I've heard that complaint before, because it's really just not the case, and you can end up earning everything in the game with in-game credits. Um, so you end up having two options in the starter category, and that's the Aurora and the Mustang series. Since we're valuing versatility here, I think the Aurora MR is the starter that best fits most people's needs. Uh, and there's a reason it's one of the most popular ship packages that has been purchased to this point. The Aurora MR gives you slightly more cargo capabilities, the interior cabin, better weaponry, and at least where things stand today, a more durable ship in combat. While you shouldn't expect to become some combat ace in an MR, uh, it should handle itself assuming the player's skill is there as well. The Mustang is faster, more agile, and just better looking as a ship, at least in my eyes, but in the starter category, it's hard to top the Aurora MR for versatility. Now, a semi-starter ship, the Reliant, uh, should be better than both of these in regards to versatility. Not only is the Reliant a two-man craft, so you can bring a buddy along for a ride, but that also gives you another set of eyes and hands to work on shield management and targeting and radar and all that type of thing. You also get about three times the cargo carrying capacity in this ship, labeled as a mini hauler, uh, and with it having alien technology on board, it should be much more agile and a quicker ship than both of the previous options we just talked about. The Reliant was initially sold for 50 bucks in the concept sale, uh, excuse me, um, which puts it slightly more expensive than the MR. However, what you get in return should be a ship that's better at just about everything. The Reliant should be more than capable of flying so at, just as a solo ship as well. You don't need that second passenger. So if you're looking to kind of strike out on your own, I think you can do just about anything well. Moving up in price just a bit, we get to the Avenger. And I'm sure you're all getting sick and tired of me talking about this ship. But hell, it's just so damn versatile. And the price is right at $60 standalone or $75 including the game package. The Avenger brings with it good speed, above average maneuverability, size 3 power plant and shield, a size 3, which is larger, is on the larger side for this size of a ship, nose gun, and distortion cannons. Um, the ship is more than capable of being a fighter, as it was originally designed as some sort of a police interceptor. To add to that, it's also capable of uh, doing bounty hunting because it has holding cells in the back. So further in development, you'll also be able to kind of rip out these holding cells and have a larger cargo carrying capacity, and that opens up a more versatile role, especially in more dangerous areas, especially when you're talking about cargo carrying capacity. Now we've heard talks about swapping out missiles for fuel tanks on this ship, which extends your range and can then make the Avenger into a capable explorer. Fighting, piracy, cargo, explorer, bounty hunting, the ship really does a little bit of everything, and that at its price point, it's hard to beat and is hands down my most recommended ship to people at this point. Um, winning second place in the How Many Times Can Youngblood Recommend This Ship Award is going to go to the Cutlass Black. Now, while most people look at this ship as a piracy option, you get an idea of the versatility of the ship based on the variants currently available. We know that there's going to be some level of modularity to allow you to add holding cells or equip med bays, but for most, I think it's a good price, smaller freighter capable of hauling goods or storing them when you happen to steal them from people. While the flight model with this ship is a little bit wonky right now, it is going to get better, and it is a very maneuverable ship for her size based on the articulated maneuvering thrusters on the side of the ship and the main rear engines. The black comes in at $100, but it really can fit the role of a bunch of different options. I don't look at it and think it's much of an explorer, but I don't really know why I say that. Um, I had a Cutlass for a really long time, and it was going to be my versatile ship in my fleet of combat options, um, and I think it finds a real sweet spot for those then in this price range. Now, for those of you wondering, I think the Freelancer is a pretty good option and is very similar in price as well, um, but when we talk about just being able to do anything, I think the Cutlass probably beats it out in regards to um, just overall versatility. With that being said, we sort of get into this specialist zone in this price range for a little while. Um, but there is one ship that I think stands out in the under $200 category, and that's the Freelancer Miss. 
The primary reason I thought the Cutlass beat out the Freelancer base model is because the combat capabilities are yet to be seen. That being said, the Mist sacrifices some of the cargo ability of the base Freelancer, but brings a literal crap ton of missiles, four size 5 guns, a large size 5 shield, and has a crew carrying capacity of 3. So if you're looking for a seat for your friends, you've got that option available. The Mist is able to deal out a lot of pain if it gets into a fight, meaning that you can go look for a fight in combat, piracy, or a bounty hunting type role. Um, you can carry cargo and protect it. You can explore and protect yourself in lawless areas, or really do just about anything. This ship is rapidly growing on me, and I think it's really becoming a good option for a lot. But I am interested in seeing about the maneuverability of the Freelancer line once we get them into our Arena Commander. The Miss is a limited sale ship, so if you have interest in getting one, keep an eye out for the anniversary sale that should be coming out in November at some point. Uh, and the last time it was available for sale was at $165. The next recommendation is actually slightly cheaper, and that's the Retaliator Base. The reason I'm doing this after the Mist, though, is because the Retaliator now comes with modules that you need to buy separately. The Retaliator was initially a, the Torpedo Bomber, the UEE, uh, and it still excels at handling the largest of targets in-game with the massive Clear Sky Torpedoes. If you want to go that route, you need to pick up at least one Bomb Bay module. Um, but it does more than that by offering different modules, like Cargo Holds or Living Areas and a Dropship module. And what these allow you to do is to keep one base ship and equip it for the role that you end up wanting to play. It's got five turrets dotted along the hull, which means you can stay fairly protected, but it also doesn't have weapons controlled by the pilot, meaning you're very reliant on those turrets. Or turrets. Um, that means that this recommendation is requiring you to have several friends to help you out, or you're going to need to pay NPCs to do the job. You can take on a lot of different roles using the Retaliator, though, and the modules make a lot of sense for this ship and can help you accomplish those goals. Cargo, check. Bomber, check. Dropship, check. Potential VIP transportation ship, check. Uh, it's also labeled as a long-range bomber, so there is potential for exploration, and with the design being so good, I love this ship. Now, there are factors to keep in mind, but you could potentially get a base with two modules and just earn the rest in the game, allowing you to get into the larger ship cheaper uh, with initial cost in mind. Now, the ship that I actually sacrificed my Retaliator for was the Constellation Andromeda, and I think if you're talking about a ship capable of doing anything, I think you look at the Andromeda and say, yep, that's the one. You get a large cargo hold, you get a missile arms with around 50 missiles, you get large man turrets, you get a mini fighter that can be deployed out the back. It also has good sized engines and maneuvering abilities and it should be able to move pretty well for a ship of her size. The Andromeda is hands down one of the most versatile ships in the game and was designed with that in mind. Much like the Cutlass, you can look at the other variants and get an idea you know, for future upgrades. And you have a ship with great exploration, merchant, combat, and many other roles possible. I think it's one of CIG's favorite and most iconic ships at this point, and as far as recommendations go, this is a very easy one for me to suggest. There are two other ships that I wanted to put on this list, both of which are more of concept ships, but if you have interest, keep an eye out for the anniversary sale. But those are going to be the Caterpillar and the Carrick. The Cat is probably the most interesting ship in the game, um, because it can really be made into what you want it to be. I think it's sort of become this piracy mini-base in a lot of people's minds, but it doesn't have to be that. The Cat is a highly modular ship, meaning that you'll be able to stack the modules you want up front in almost like a space barge type of, type of formation. Uh, and these modules can be a wide variety of things, like flat out just cargo or search and rescue operations like the description states. Or they could be exploration modules or defensive modules or electronic warfare options. Um, the problem we have with the Cat right now is that we don't have much information to go on, um, though it's been on concept sale for a while, or just in concept for a while. I'm hoping we get more specific soon, but the stats page, which isn't always right, has a uh, 512 cargo capacity, which is the largest of the ships we've talked about so far. The description says that it's the evil twin of the Freelancer, but in reality, I actually think it's closer to the Constellation as far as size and capabilities go. It's not even for sale at this moment, so you have some time to consider different things about this ship and wait for more information, but it's a ship you should at least consider if you're interested in a larger ship with a ton of potential. The cat was last sold at $245. And then we have the Carrick, which was uh, $350 during the last concept sale. The Carrick is built primarily as an exploration ship, um, but with that in mind, the ship is actually a well-rounded ship capable of a lot of different roles and responsibilities. Like the Constellation, the Carrick gets a snub-nosed scout ship to carry on board, in addition to the rover it brings for planet-side exploration. 
Um, it also has a lot of sensor arrays to help with jump points and other scanning while exploring, but I look at this as a borderline command and control ship. It also has a good cargo capacity at over a thousand cargo units, has two large turrets, uh, and an onboard med bay. So I think if your game is search and rescue or cargo or support um, for combat operations or exploration or several other different roles, I think the Carrick fits nicely in the high end of the price spectrum. So there's other ships I didn't mention, like the Phoenix or the 890 Jump, because they were very limited release sales, or others like the Javelin or the Idris, because they're also limited and extremely expensive. So they don't really make for good recommendations overall. But to sum this up, I think climbing the price points, my key recommendations are going to be the Avenger, the Cutlass, and the Constellation Andromeda, um, with at least others that you should consider based on what you're looking to do. So I hope that helped you guys out. If you have questions about any of this, please put it in the comments. I'm happy to answer what I can. Um, stay tuned for a whole lot more content. You know there's going to be more coming soon. Uh, have yourselves a wonderful day and take care.